welcome to Solosaurus, a podcast about one-player board and card games. My name is Brandon Waite, and this is episode 23, where we're going to be doing something a little bit different this episode. Carter's not here with me today like he normally is. He's in Louisiana visiting family for the holidays. And so instead of doing our usual thing where we cover the news for the week and then we look at one game in depth, I'm instead going to be doing my top 10 anticipated games for 2019. This is something that I put out on Facebook this past week to see if anybody was interested in, and I got a lot of positive feedback there. A lot of people seem to want to hear about which games I'm most excited about for this next year. And so I put together that list to cover on the podcast right now. And Carter is really into games, and he does enjoy playing solo games, but he doesn't really look ahead that much to what's coming out and getting excited about it. He's excited about what's on the table in front of him, uh, with very few exceptions. So instead of having Carter participate in this list this year, I'm just going to be doing this myself and... If you have any feedback on the list, games that you think that I've overlooked, because I almost certainly have overlooked some, or if you have other games that you're excited about, please let me know on Facebook. I'd love to talk with you about it. But first, let's just get into the list. Now, I want to start by saying I have almost certainly missed some games that are coming out in 2019. It's hard to tell exactly what's coming out this next year because so many games that are kickstarted in 2018 but not releasing until 2019, show up in BGG as 2018 games. So that's a little bit confusing. I've tried my best to sift through both of those years to see which games are actually coming out this next year, uh, so we can include those in the list, but I'm sure that I've missed a few along the way. Also, I haven't included expansions on this list, and there are several expansions that I'm very much looking forward to, especially the new expansion for Anachrony that's supposed to be coming out this next year. Very excited for that. I'm excited for the new Gloomhaven expansion, other things like that that would be on here if I included that. Uh, But instead, I just decided to go for standalone games. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. And we'll start out the list here with number 10, which is Tainted Grail from Awakened Realms. Now, I recognize that I'm probably alone in putting this game this low on my list. I didn't actually back this game on Kickstarter like everybody else in the world seems to. I just, I think it looks really interesting. I like the idea of a grim Arthurian setting where you're going around a world laying down cards in a format similar to Seventh Continent, trying to explore the world around you, trying to figure out what's causing these dark forces to try to come and take over the last few towns that remain in the Camelot setting. I think all of that's great. I really like that. I'm just not 100% sold on the combat mechanics for this game. I know a lot of people think they're very interesting, and maybe they are. It's just, I want to experience them in person, maybe, and until I do, I can't quite put it higher on the list. Uh, Plus, I just don't have the funds to back this on Kickstarter right now, so while I think it's interesting, I'm just going to be stuck waiting until the retail version comes out, which is a little bit less exciting. But even with that said, I'm still very excited, partly because this is a true solo game, from what I can tell, where you don't have to control multiple characters, which I really, really like, and just because the setting and the world looks so cool. Awakened Realms comes up with some really neat settings for their games, and so I'm anxious to see more about Tainted Grail from Awakened Realms. My number nine game that I'm most excited about this year is Role Player Adventures from Thunderworks Games and designers Keith Matejka, Peter Andrew Ryan, and James William Ryan. This game ends up on the list because I love Role Player. If you've heard our review of Role Player, you know that's one of my favorite games from this last year. I think it's brilliant. I think the expansion just really ups the ante in a way that excites me. And I am even more excited to learn that this new game, which is a standalone game, is going to be like a storybook adventure type game. I don't have many more details about it than that. There isn't a whole lot on BGG, but it sounds like, from what I can envision anyway, this will be similar to something like Four Against Darkness or D100 Dungeon or maybe more like a Legacy of Dragonholt. And if you've listened to our review of Legacy of Dragonholt, you know I really wanted to like that game. I really, really did. But several things about it just didn't work for me. I'm hoping that Thunderworks, if that's the kind of game they're trying to create here, has learned from some of those mistakes and is able to flesh out their own world a little bit because they are setting more and more games in this role player universe, which I think is cool. 
but we don't actually know that much about the universe yet, right? I mean, there's just role player and a little bit of flavor text that's in that game, plus the lockup Euro game that they've got coming out next year, which I am also very excited about. Uh, but neither of those things seem to flesh out the world that much. I'm excited to see what they do with the world. I'm also very excited that the characters you create in role player can be brought into this game and used in these adventures. I think that's a really cool concept and something that I'm just very much looking forward to. And that is role player adventures from Thunderworks games. My number eight game that I'm most excited about for this next year is Cloudspire. This is from Josh J. Carlson and Adam Carlson and published by Chip Theory Games. Chances are, if you're a solo gamer, you've heard about this from this last year. This is the next big box title from Chip Theory after they've done games like Hoplomachus and Too Many Bones and smaller games like Triplock. Now they're coming out with this big title. And that's exciting to me because they don't put out very many games. And so the games that they put out, I think they put a lot of love into. They're obviously a very passionate group of guys and who come up with some really interesting worlds with very original settings and novel game mechanics. So I'm excited to see how all those come together in this game. What makes this a little bit lower on the list is it seems like a lot on the table. Like it would take a long time to get through a play session of this. And also, I haven't historically loved MOBA-style games, so I'm hoping this can be the one that turns me around on it. I do think it looks excellent. The world and everything is so compelling. I'm very anxious to learn more about Cloudspire from Josh J. Carlson and Adam Carlson and Chip Theory Games. My number seven game that I'm most excited for this year is Shadows of Killforth, and this is from Tristan Hall and Hall or Nothing Productions, which by the way, is an amazing name for a company. Second only to Sorry We Are French, which has to be the all-time best name for a company ever. This is going to be a standalone sequel to Gloom of Killforth. Now, I've never played Gloom of Killforth, but as I understand it, it's sort of a open-world style card-based adventure game set in a fantasy world where you're going around encountering different people in the world, fighting monsters influencing others in this world and trying to beat some kind of big bad. I love that. I love big open world adventure games. That really is the sort of thing that gets me excited. For some reason, this just hasn't come across my table. I've always been interested in it, but it's never been at the top of my list. This new sequel, though, looks really cool. It's a slightly more gothic take on the the theme that we found in the original. And it sounds like if you have the original game, like maybe these two are compatible somehow. But for me, as somebody who doesn't have that, I'm just excited because this offers me an entrance into the game. So I expect we'll see this on Kickstarter sometime this next year. If you haven't heard of it yet, check out Shadows of Killforth from Hall or Nothing Productions. My number six anticipated game for next year is Paladins of the West Kingdom from Garfield Games and designers Shim Phillips and S.J. McDonald. Now, we just recently did... We just recently did a review of Architects of the West Kingdom, which is sort of the sequel, I guess you could say, to Raiders of the North Sea. And I liked Raiders of the North Sea. I love Architects of the West Kingdom. And that is supposed to be just the start of a new trilogy of games set in that universe, I guess, which is their take on medieval Europe. I don't usually care that much about the medieval Europe kind of theme, But the artwork in the game really brings it alive in a new sort of way for me. Plus, it's sort of a fun take on that era. I like that a lot. And I'm very excited to see what they do with this standalone game, which is the second in that trilogy. It sounds like the kingdom that you've helped to build in the first game is now coming under attack from the Saracens and Vikings and other people groups. And you're going to be trying to spread faith throughout the country using your paladins and trying to draft workers who can maybe help you defend the city. I'm just very excited to see what this is like because I just think Garfield Games does some really interesting stuff. They have a way of twisting familiar mechanics in ways that feel fresh, but also not so novel that they're just hard to get your arms around, I guess. They hit the table well. They typically have great solo play out of the box, and this one is supposed to have solo play out of the box, as all of these games on this list do. And I'm just very excited for that. I am very anxious to see what they do to develop this system further, or to see how similar, I guess, it is to Architects. That's why I'm excited for Paladins of the West Kingdom from Garfield Games. 
My number five game I'm most excited for this next year is Metal Gear Solid, the board game from IDW Games and designer Emerson Matsuchi. Now, I like Metal Gear Solid. I played the first game in the series, and actually, I didn't actually play it on the PS1. I played it on the GameCube when it was Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, and I know a lot of people don't like that version. I thought it was awesome. That's all I knew. So for me, it was an excellent introduction to the series. I never ended up going on to play the other titles just because I never had the systems I needed to do it. But I'll say I really like that world and I'm very excited to see that they're going to be making a board game set in it and that it has one player out of the box because that seems to fit in my mind perfectly with the theme of Metal Gear Solid. So here's hoping you don't have to play it multi-handed. Uh, There's not a whole lot of information out about this yet. What has me excited is the theme and the fact that Emerson Matsuchi is doing it. I didn't love Century Spice Road or Century Eastern Wonders the way that other folks did, but what I did like about it is that it's so streamlined and so simple and to the point, and yet there there is some depth there in the game. He also did Reef, which is an amazing game that came out this last year that I'm really loving on right now that we'll probably cover on the show in the future because there is a, a solo variant available for it on Board Game Geek. I just think that he does great work, and I'm not used to seeing designers of his kind of pedigree bringing their skills to a miniatures-based big box board game. I'm really anxious to see what he does to streamline those type of games and hoping that this becomes a very compelling solo experience. So very much looking forward to Metal Gear Solid, the board game from IDW Games. My number four most anticipated game for next year is also based on video game intellectual property, and that is Bloodborne, the board game from Simon and designer Eric Lang. Now, Simon is not the kind of company that I'm on board with all their products. We've been critical of them in the past, especially how they run their campaigns. But if we were talking about multiplayer games, my favorite game of all time is probably Blood Rage. I think it's an amazing design. It's so simple, so streamlined, has tons of great decisions, plus good production values without being, in my opinion, overproduced. So I really like Eric Lang and what he did with that game. The production values of Simon, even though I don't always like how they run their campaigns, they're obviously stellar. And I'm really anxious to see what they do with Bloodborne because I love Bloodborne. If you've never played the video game on PS4, it's a it's a gothic horror style setting where you are going through this city that you don't know exactly what's happened to it or or why you're there and you're trying to fight monsters to gain stuff that will allow you to power up and level up and you fight big bosses and I just love the setting I love the gameplay so much I put tons of hours into that game and that was my entrance into the Dark Souls Bloodborne type series so I have a lot of affection for this property and I just want to see them do right by it I don't know for sure that they will But it does excite me that they're solo out of the box. That's encouraging to me. And I'm just anxious to see somebody do the series of games right. From what I understand, Dark Souls the board game, the card game are all pretty clunky. I played Bloodborne the card game. It was fine, I guess, but it doesn't really get at the heart of what Bloodborne actually is. So this could be a total flop, but it's just something I'm very excited to see for this next year. That is Bloodborne, the board game, which should be coming to Kickstarter in February of this year from Simon Games. My number three most anticipated game for the year is Unbroken from Artem Safarov and Ultima Games. And I just am so amazed by this title because this raised a ton of money on Kickstarter And it's like a solo-only player game. I'm just so excited by that, that people see the value of a well-produced solo game. And the theme here is so cool. It's like if you mix Die Hard with Fantasy. You are somebody who's been in a dungeon going on a quest to get something out of a dungeon. And your party was ambushed. And everybody else is killed. And you're the one still alive. And you're trying to make your way out of the dungeon alive. That's so cool. And not only is the theme cool, but the gameplay looks interesting. And what I really love about this project is this is exactly the sort of project that Kickstarter was made for. 
This isn't a large company that already has stuff produced and just waiting to ship out the way Monolith Games has been doing recently. This isn't a company that has the capital elsewhere to create a well-produced game. This is a guy who has worked hard developing this over the course of a couple of years. He came up with a great idea, great concept, good artwork, had a lot of the pieces in place, but just wanted to make it the best possible product he could. And so he put it on Kickstarter, and the whole process has been collaborative, and the production value is so much better than he could have gotten without Kickstarter backers. I'm just excited to see how it plays on the table. It looks wonderful. I can't wait to get my hands on it. And if you missed out on the Kickstarter, don't worry. This should be coming to retail sometime next year as well. This is Unbroken from designer Artem Safarov and Ultima Games. Check it out if you haven't already. My number two most anticipated game for next year is one that was only announced just a couple of weeks ago from Stonemaier Games, and it's from a new first-time designer, Beth Hargrave, or Elizabeth Hargrave, as she's listed on BGG, and this is Wingspan. This just looks so cool to me because this is a game that has a very unusual theme. It's about trying to build up a bird sanctuary, and you are an ornithologist, I guess. Hopefully, ornithologist. Yeah, I don't know for sure if that's the right word. I think it is. You are a person who really likes birds and trying to build a bird sanctuary. And I just love the theme. The artwork is bright and vibrant and colorful. And the components for this game just look, I mean, gobsmackingly gorgeous. There's this really neat little birdhouse looking dice tower that you can roll these wooden food dice down so that your birds have something to eat. They have these little eggs that look like the pastel candy-coated eggs you can find at Easter that nobody actually eats, I think. They look amazing. Uh, come with little containers to hold all of those. It just looks fantastic. But also, the gameplay that we've seen from Watch It Played's video of this just looks wonderful as well. This looks like an engine-building game. In fact, I think Jamie Stegmeier compared this to Terraforming Mars when he first announced it. That automatically gets me excited. Uh, The way that you're using your bird is to build little engines and three different rows across your main player board looks great. It looks different. I'm just so excited to see what this has to offer. Plus the inserts, the production, all of it is just so well thought out, so well designed. Can't wait to get my hands on this. By the time you hear this episode, this is up for pre-order on Stonemaier Games' website. I think it starts on January 2nd. So if you're at all interested in their titles, you're interested in the theme, or you just want to support this good first-time designer, check out Wingspan from Stonemaier Games. And my number one most anticipated game from this next year is one that a lot of you have probably already played already. It's a reissue, a a reworking of a classic worker placement game and solo game, well-loved solo game, called Snowdonia. This is Snowdonia, the deluxe master set from NSKN Games and designer Tony Boydell. This is something that was available on Kickstarter. I believe you'll still be able to buy it at retail as well. But this is a a game about building train tracks, clearing rubble from a mountain to build train tracks so that you can haul goods from one place to another, I guess. From what I can tell from watching gameplay videos, this looks like such a streamlined, simple, crunchy worker placement game. And it just has me so excited because people have loved this for a long time. And not only is that solo mode from the original game back, but there's also a new one being developed by, I believe, David Turchi, which... I mean, if you've listened to this podcast for very long, you know I love me some David Turchi. So, very excited to see this. Plus, it includes all the content ever created for Snowdonia. It includes upgraded components. The whole package just looks amazing. Cannot wait to get this to my table next year. That is Snowdonia, the deluxe master set. And those are the 10 games I'm looking forward to most this next year. I'm sure I've missed some others. If you know of others I've missed, please let me know. And I hope that this helps you to start planning for what you're going to be playing this next year. Some of these games may come out and be just a a total bomb for us. I get that. That's happened to me plenty of times before. In fact, we might go back and revisit this list at the end of the year after I've had a chance to play these games. But these are the ones I'm looking forward to the most 
right now. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, follow us on Facebook if you haven't already, where you can see what we've been playing lately and what we're up to when we're not recording the podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at at Solosaurus Podcast. And if you haven't already, go on to Board Game Geek, send me a message, and I'll send you the geek gold you need to get our micro badge. We have a little micro badge of a tiny yellow and purple dinosaur. I'd love to give you one. I've got the geek gold to, to spot you if you don't have it. Just send me a message, and I'll be more than happy to send you that. Oh, also, we're on Twitter now. I sort of forgot that because that's a more recent development. You can find us on Twitter at at SolosaurusCast, not podcast because that was taken or too long or something. I can't remember why I couldn't get it. But follow us on Twitter. We'll be putting out some different stuff on there that we don't share on Facebook and Instagram. And keep your eyes peeled because we should have a new giveaway starting next week where you can win a bundle of small solo games. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and that way you can see when that contest goes up. But that's all we've got for you this episode. Until next time, I'm Brandon Waite, and this is Solosaurus. Solosaurus.